Hi everyone, let's begin. In this video, I'm going to explain you difference between parametric and non-parametric test. Uh, before starting parametric and non-parametric test, where we are going to apply parametric and non-parametric test, we should understand why we are using parametric and non-parametric test. Uh, basically, we are using parametric and non-parametric test for hypothesis testing. Whether our null hypothesis is accepted or uh, we are failed to reject null hypothesis or we are accepting alternate hypothesis. So what could be the steps we have to follow? Here is you can see here i am just taking my laser pointer here is this one is the hypothesis there are two kinds of hypothesis null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis so we are going for high hypothesis testing so to explain this hypothesis testing there would be statistical test we have to use any one of statistical tests either it could be parametric test or it could be non parametric test so what could be the condition which test would be applicable whether it would be parametric test or it could be non parametric test that depends upon our data whether our data is is normally distributed or data is not normally distributed or because non-parametric test we are calling a distribution free test also for the non-parametric test there is no assumptions there is no condition data should be normally distributed but parametric test that is the most important condition data should be normally distributed so and as well as data should be collected at the it should be at the metric and as well as it should be collected at the interval or ratio scale. But for the non-parametric test, data should be collected at in nominal or ordinal scale. So let's begin. There is, first of all, we should understand type 1 and type 2 error also. So type 1 error means when our null hypothesis is true and it is accepted, right? That is the correct decision right and uh, here is the probability is 1 minus alpha because probability type 1 error is that we are denoting as alpha but when null hypothesis is true but we had rejected that is known as type 1 error type 2 error means when our null hypothesis is false but still we are accepting that is probability is beta we are denoting as beta that is known as type 2 error but when null hypothesis is false and we are rejecting that is the correct decision so that is the i mean here is the statistical part probability 1 minus beta so which one is more dangerous type 2 error is more dangerous because we are accepting something wrong and in type 1 error, we are rejecting something is correct. So there is no, uh, fa no, no fault and that would not be harmful to anyone. But type 2 error, that is most dangerous because we are accepting something wrong. So then we come to the parametric test. Parametric tests are those tests for which we have prior knowledge of the population distribution. That means that is not distribution free. Or if not, then we can easily approximate it to a normal distribution, which is possible with the help of the central limit theorem. But when we talk about the non-parametric test, there is the one, one of the most important, uh, we can say, per, uh, assumption. That is population or the population we are studying. In fact, these tests do not depend on the population. And hence, there is no fixed set of parameters is available. And also there is no distribution, normal distribution, etc. of any kind is available for use. The parametric test is the hypothesis test which provides generalization for making statements about the mean of the parent population. And here is those parametric tests are available. One is t-test, second is z-test, f-test and ANOVA, analysis of variance. And uh, parametric test assumptions, as I said earlier also, random independent sample, that is the most important assumption, and that could be applicable for non-parametric also. And data should be in interval or ratio scale, that means uh, that could be metric data, continuous scale data, 
and uh, data should be normally distributed. No outliers should be there and homogeneity of variance as well as sample size larger than minimum for many non-parametric tests. But when we talk about this uh, normality, I had already uploaded this video, uh, YouTube. I mean, this one is the link and I'm going to share this link in my description box also. And already I had uh, already explained you normality document over there, how we have to check the normality. I will just show you how we have to check the normality. Let me start this. So you can see here the same data through there are the various methods th through descriptive analysis, uh, skewness and kurtosis, Shapiro test, box plot, PP plot, QQ plot. I had already explained in this video normality test video. So please go through how we have to check normality, how we have to apply these um, equations, how we have to check these are the outliers through box plot. I had explained each and everything over there. So next we come to the uh, T test. First of all, what do you mean by t-test? T-test is a parametric test of hypothesis testing based on student's t-distribution. It is essentially testing the significance of the difference of the mean values when the sample size is small. That is less than 30 and when the population standard deviation is not available, right? When standard deviation is available, then we are going to use Z test. So assumption of this test, population distribution is normal and uh, sample are random and independent. Sample size is small, population standard deviation is not known, right? And uh, man whitney u test is a non-parametric test that is a counterpart of the t-test. When our data is, that means when data is uh, uh, non-parametric at the time of this is the replacement of this t-test is man whitney u-test. And uh, t-test can be a one sample t-test to compare a sample mean with that of the population mean. This is the formula, right, for the one sample t-test. This one is the we can say x bar minus mu s divided by under root n. x bar is means sample mean, s is the sample standard deviation, n is sample size, and mu is the population mean. When we come to the two sample t test and to compare the means of two different samples, because they are different, different samples. And they are, here is x1 bar means sample mean of the first group, x bar two, x2 bar is the sample mean of the second group, and s1 is the sample uh, one standard deviation, and s2 is the sample two standard deviation, and is the sample size. So basically, if the value of the test statistic is greater than the table value, we will reject the null hypothesis. And if the value of the test statistics is less than the table value, so do not reject the null hypothesis. And we can write fail to reject the null hypothesis. Next, we come to the Z test. And it is a parametric test of hypothesis testing. It is used to determine whether the means are different when the population value variance is known and the sample size is large, that is greater than 30. So assumptions of this test, population distribution is normal, samples are random and independent, and the sample size is large and population standard deviation is known. So I'm sure you understand what is the difference between t-test and z-test. z-test here is standard deviation is known, sample size is large, but for t-test, sample size is small and standard deviation is not known. So z-test formula I had already given over here, x bar minus mu and sigma divided by under root n. X bar sample mean, mu population means, and sigma population standard deviation and means sample size. When we come to the two sample Z test, I had already taken this formula in uh, and how we have to express this formula. X1 is the sample mean of first group. X2 is the sample mean of second group. Sigma 1, population 1 standard deviation. Sigma 2, population 2 standard deviation and is the sample size. 
When we come to the F, F test, it is a parametric test of hypothesis testing based on Sandikov F distribution. It is test for the null hypothesis that two normal populations have the same variance, right? When the two normal populations have the same variance, in this condition, we are going to use F test. And F test is regarded as a comparison of equality of sample variance. And F statistics is simply a ratio of two variables. And this is how we have to calculate F equal to S1 square divided by S2 square. So by changing the variance in the ratio, F test has become a very flexible test. It can then be used to and test the overall significance for a regression model. You have seen when we are applying, when we are running regression model, and uh, we want to check what is the significance of that regression model through F test we are going to check. And to compare the fits of different models and to test the equality of means and assumption of this test, population distribution is normal. That is why it is a parametric test and samples are drawn randomly and independently. Both these conditions, both these assumptions are fulfilled, then you have to apply F test. This is the formula of the F test. And here is the changing the variance in the ratio. F test has become a very flexible test. It can then be used to test the overall significance for a regression model, to compare the fits of different models and to test the equality of means. And uh, next we come to the, here is the, when we are going to compare parametric and non-parametric tests. So one of the most important difference, parametric test is more powerful, non-parametric test is less powerful. Less chances as compared to non-parametric tests to make type two error and more chances as compared to parametric tests to make type two errors. So here is, nowadays we can see here parametric tests, non-parametric tests are most popular tests. And uh, when we compare which test is replacing a non-parametric test, so this is the table I had created, independent sample t-test, when we are using in uh, for the parametric uh, data, non-parametric test, that is man whitney U-test. And paired sample t-test, when we are going to use, that means dependent sample t-test, then Wilcoxon signed rank test we are going to use for non-parametric data. One way ANOVA through kruskal wallis test and one way repeated measures, Friedman ANOVA. Next, we come to the uh, parametric versus non-parametric. So here is parametric uh, parameters for using the normal distributions is mean and standard deviation. But in the case of non-parametric, not mean, not standard deviation, because for, uh, here is, that is the distribution free test. So for this purpose, we are going to use only median. And eventually the classification of a test to be parametric is completely dependent on the population assumptions. There are many parametric tests available from which some of them are as follows. Number one, to find the confidence interval for the population means with the help of known standard deviation. To determine the confidence interval for population means along with the unknown standard deviation to find the confidence interval for the population variance and to find the confidence interval for the difference of two means with an unknown value of a standard deviation. But when we talk about non-parametric test, that is distribution-free test, right? Main reason in, the, in, in that there is no need to be mannered while using parametric test. Second reason why we, that is most popular, the, we do not require to make assumptions about the population given or taken or which we are doing the analysis. So most of the non-parametric tests available are very easy to apply and to understand also that is the complexity is very low. So this is the table I had created, hypothesis testing and parametric test, non-parametric. If the, your data is one sample, then you're going to apply t-test and z-test. When your data is two sample means, uh, it could be either dependent or independent. When the independent, you are going to apply independent t-test and z-test. When data is dependent sample, then pair t-test you're going to apply. But in the condition of the non-parametric data, one sample and two sample, when the one sample chi-square test, KS test, runs test, binomial test, but when 
the data is the two sample, again, it would be categorized in two categories, independent sample and dependent sample. So independent sample here is chi-square test, man test, KS test. But dependent sample, sign test, Wilcoxon test, McNamara McNim test, chi-square test. So I'm sure this table would uh, give you clear idea about it, where we are going to apply parametric and non-parametric, as well as when we have two sample, so in which condition, which test is would be suitable. So non-parametric tests, when we talk about are experiments that do not require the underlying population for assumptions, it does not rely on any data, referring to any particular parametric group of probability distribution. So here is non-parametric methods are also called, that is why distribution pre-test. And uh, when we come to the uh, non-parametric test assumptions, I had already explained you, right, symmetric distribution for Wilcoxon and two sample, we are going, use, we are going to use man whitney and for the same shape and equal variance, we are going to use Crystal Wallace and Friedman ANOVA. And uh, non-parametric test, now I'm going to explain you there are one uh, most important thing that is uh, crystal wallis H test. It is a non-parametric test of hypothesis testing. And here is, uh, we are using in which condition comparing two or more independent samples of equal or different sample size. And man whitney U test, which is used to comparing only two groups, and one way ANOVA is the parametric equivalent of the test. That is one way ANOVA on ranks. And test statistics used here is H. So that is why we are calling it Kruskal Wallis H test, right? And chi square test, I had already explained you. I will give you all these links where I had explained you chi square test, man whitney U test, Crystal Wallace test, Friedman test, each and everything that would in my description box. So if you have any doubts, any clarity, you have to go through all these tests. So it is a non-parametric test of hypothesis testing. Non-parametric test chi-square can be used, test of goodness of fit, test of independence of two variables, and assessing the goodness of fit between a set of the observed and the expected theoretical. Then we, this is the formula I had already explained you goodness of fit in my previous video. And uh, I'm sure this video would be helpful to understand all these things. What is the man whitey U test? And I will give you all the links in my description box. So I'm sure you could be able to understand clear idea about parametric and non-parametric test. So I'm sure please keep watching this video and my, those are the, I, I will give you in my description box. Thank you.